My name is Kavul Ken Mistral. I'm the Division Chief of Pediatric Ophthalmology and Strabismus at the Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh of UPMC. I'm also a Professor of Ophthalmology at the School of Medicine, University of Pittsburgh. I'm the Vice Chair of uh, the Department of Ophthalmology and I'm also Assistant Medical Director for International Division of UPMC. For a long time, people used to think that a child's eye was just a smaller version of an adult eye, but that's not true. The younger the child's eye, the difference in tissue elasticity, tissue reaction, how the tissue reacts when you cut it, uh, is completely different. And this is because the sclera, which is the white of the eye, it's much more elastic. The cornea, which is the clear part of the eye, much more elastic. So you have to take these things into consideration. For example, for a long time, we used to think that in, like we did in adults when we do cataract surgery, you could put a suture as a traction suture to hold the eye in place. If you do that in a child's eye who is very young, let's say one years old, you distort the eye because the eye is so elastic and this can directly influence how your surgical outcomes are. Pediatric cataract surgery is hugely different from adult cataract surgery depending on the age of the child. For a start, all the implants, the intraocular implants that are made, they're made for the size of the adult eye. So you have to know as a surgeon when a baby's eye becomes close to that of an adult's eye. When a child is born, the entire length of the eye is around 16.8 millimeters. But in the first 18 months of life, that eye grows three and three quarter millimeters to start to become the size of an adult eye. So the first thing is, you have to know how the child's eye changes. The second thing is that where you, where, what a, a cataract is essentially is the human lens gone wrong. You know when you open an egg before you heat it, the white is clear and then you put it on the heating pan and it turns white. Why? Because the, the white of the, uh, uh, of the egg is made of proteins. When you denature those proteins, they go opaque from being clear. Similarly, the human lens, especially the baby's lens, is like a little candy. It's like a, uh, either a Smartie or an M&M candy. It has a capsule around it, like the sugar coating, and then the chocolate inside is the clear protein. When you get a cataract, that protein, for whatever reason, denatures. Now, when it happens in adults, it's because they're getting old and the lens proteins are denaturing. In children, it can happen either because of genetic causes or because of an intrauterine infection or because of trauma. But basically, the whole lens is affected. So when you put an implant in a baby's eye or let's say a one year's eye, you have to know what the size of that uh, bag that you're putting the implant in is. And so it's very important to know that. We know at birth the capsular bag diameter is 7.5 millimeters, and then it eventually grows to about 10.5 millimeters in an emetropic adult. So firstly, your knowledge base has to be much more secure. The other thing is the anesthesia. Very difficult to do a cataract surgery on a child under local anesthetic because the child will move. So you have to understand the effect of anesthesia on the eye. The first thing is the child must be paralyzed because you don't want the eye to move. The second thing is you mustn't use a traction suture because it will distort the eye because the globe is elastic in a child. The third thing is when the child is asleep, the carbon dioxide level in the child's blood must be below 30 pascals. And the reason is when it's high, the jelly in the eye uh, swells and it wants to push the colored part of the eye out of the eye. When that happens, the rates of complications go up. So these are really important considerations. The next thing is this. When you put an implant in a child's eye, it must be in the bag. If you put it in the sulcus, which is between the bag and the iris, the younger the child, the greater the risk of chronic uveitis, chronic glaucoma, and lots of complications. 
So those are really very basic but very important differences between pediatric cataract surgery and adult cataract surgery. There's one more really important one. When we do adult cataract surgery, we take away the nucleus and then we take out the cortex. In children with a dense white cataract, you want to take out the periphery first because it aspirates and the nucleus you take out last. Why? Because in children there's a greater chance of a congenital defect in the posterior capsule. And if you take the nucleus out first, vitreous can come forward, then you can put traction on the vitreous that can lead to retinal detachments. So there's a very fundamental difference between how you remove the cataract in children and in adults. Pediatric cornea surgery is really quite um, intricate uh, and high risk. Why? Because the, when you do an adult corneal transplant, normally you take the sutures out in a year. If you do a child under the age of one, you have to be prepared to take all the sutures out at six weeks because the child's tissues, they, they, they heal very aggressively. And if you are not watching that child carefully every week, then the sutures can become loose and cause an epithelial rejection, which negates all the good work that you did. The other thing is that the rates of glaucoma are higher in pediatric cases, so you have to be much more vigilant, otherwise your graft will fail if you fail to treat the glaucoma. In children, more than adults, if you fail to prepare the graft and the surgery and the post care properly, if you fail to prepare, then you have to be prepared to fail. So it's really important that the surgery is meticulous and the follow-up is meticulous. And I think those are the really the crucial differences between corneal, uh, pediatric corneal surgery and adult corneal surgery. One of the most amazing things that's come about in the last few years is the use of integrated intraoperative OCT. This is the ability to have ocular coherence tomography images in the ocular that you're looking at at your tissue simultaneously. So not only do you see the tissue, but you can see through the tissue in the cross section, which tells you where to operate and if you, what maneuvers to make so your outcomes are the best. This has completely changed. It's flattened the learning curve. It allows us to uh, do surgery that perhaps we couldn't do before because it felt too complex, but now it's made easier. It also makes teaching of the surgery easier for uh, fellows and residents. So overall, it makes the whole thing safer. And it's not just anterior segment surgery. You can use it for anterior segment surgery for uh, lamellar keratoplasty, either endothelial keratoplasty or deep anterior lamellar keratoplasty. But you can also use it for retinal work and also for strabismus work. For example, um, often when we use botulinum toxin in a muscle, we use an EMG machine to tell us if the needle is in the muscle. Well, with intraoperative OCT, you can see the needle in real time advancing into the muscle, so now you can see it. And you know what they say, seeing is believing, and then you can inject safely. So it's really changed many things that we can do and that we will do.